Kaitak Airport is named after two businessmen, Sir Hokai and Mr. Rotak, who reclaimed the land in Kowloon Bay in 1912, to develop a residential garden estate. Their company Kaitak Investment Company, failed and the land was left vacant. In 1925 the government took over the land to use it as an airport and the first recorded flight landed the same year. Initially it was a simple grass strip runway with a flying school and a British military flying unit. In 1928, a concrete slipway was built for seaplanes. In 1935, the first control tower and a hangar were built. The first commercial passengers flight Gerato landed in 1936 from Penang, operated by the Imperial Airways. The first tarmac runway, running east-west, was 457 meters long and completed in 1939. During the Second World War the Japanese expanded Kaitak with two concrete crossing runways. In 1958, a new northwest, southeast heading 2,529 meter runway was constructed on a promontory into Kowloon Bay. The first landing on new runway, 1331, took place on September 12, 1958. Kai Tak Airport was named Hong Kong International Airport. In 1962, a passenger terminal building was built and turboprop aircraft were being replaced by jets. In 1974, the special visual approach of runway 13 was replaced by the instrument guidance system IGS. In 1975, the runway was expanded to 3,390 meters for long-haul flights. In the following years many expansions took place. In 1996, Kaitak Airport reached an important milestone when it handled 29.5 million international passengers and became the first in the world for international cargo. The landing procedure in Kaitak used to be easier back in the days when crossing runways were in operation. Arriving aircraft flew between Lanta Island and Hong Kong Island, making a 25 degrees right turn, a couple of miles, before the touchdown of runway 07. That procedure was the NDB runway 13 that we refer to later on. After World War II, several expansions of the airport took place, in order to serve the increasing demand. The crossed runway system, changed to a single runway. Runway 0725 was demolished, and a new 1331 runway constructed. The master plan of this major expansion was approved by the government on 1954, and the new runway was completed in 1958. Approach path remains the same, but now the turn for a landing was increased, from 25 degrees, to 90 for runway 13. Of course that procedure, was impossible to be followed by any jetliner. On April 11, 1970, a Boeing 747 landed for the first, time in airport's history. Since the IGS-13 procedure established in 1974, we have no idea. How this specific flight, among as many others with jets, landed in Kaitak all these years. And of course, flying the NDB-13 procedure, via Charlie Charlie, 
is out of the question, due to the 90 degrees turn on short final. In early 70s most of the traffic at Kaitak was jets. Jets required more accurate approach, due to their higher approach speed. The authorities had to design an approach to be certified for jetliners. But how is it possible to make a precision approach for a jetliner between sharp mountains and over a high densely populated area? According to Ikawan X14 and the experience of other airports in the world, it seems impossible. But British aviators made it. In 1974, Kaitak Airport had just one instrument approach for runway 13. The IGS-13 approach. It was a mix of an IFR standard arrival and precision approach with the visual approach. Initially it seemed like a normal ILS approach guiding the arriving heavy jetliners through the densely populated district of Kowloon, between the mountains. Up to that point there are a few similar precision approaches around the world. But the IGS approach was not leading the airplanes to the runway like other offset ILS approaches do. The IGS was actually leading the planes on a hill. The hill of Tsai Park in Kowloon. But how exactly was the IGS approach flown? The approach of runway 13 was divided in two parts. Part 1, the precision instrument approach, IGS 13. Part 2, the visual approach. Here are the navigational aids of the IGS approach depicted on a satellite map. VOR, Changshou, Charlie Hotel. NDB, Changshou, Charlie Charlie. Point Golf. NDB, Shalo Wan, Sierra Lima. Localizer DME, Kilo Lima. NDB, Kaitak, Romeo Whiskey. Outer marker. Middle marker. The most significant component of the IGS runway 13 procedure was the ICB. The instrument checkerboard. This was the link of the IGS precision landing procedure with the visual procedure at the final stage. Part 1 and Part 2 as mentioned before. Here the ICB on a simulator during day and night. And here is the runway view from the Kowloon Tsai Park, the hill of ICB. The antenna for lateral guidance, localizer, was on the ground next to the track of Kowloon Tsai Park, and the vertical guidance, glide path, was located on the red pole of the checkerboard. The checkerboard was supposed to be used as a visual aid similar to Poppy, but offering also left and right guidance. 7,000 feet, for the vicious step down approach runway 13, intimation golf kh 1017 The IGS-13 approach was starting on a single point, Charlie Hotel VOR or Charlie Charlie NDB no matter what direction the inbound traffic was coming from. We will analyze the most common IGS-13 arrival, the one that was starting from the initial point VOR Charlie Hotel, that all heavy jets were performing. All arriving traffic was sorted at Changshou Island, over VOR Charlie Hotel at a minimum altitude of 6,000 feet. Then, the aircraft were flying on radial 270 outbound Charlie Hotel VOR, for 7 DME to reach Point Golf. Reaching Point Golf, was also cross-checked using also Sierra Lima, NDB, Magnetic Track 360. The airplanes should be over Golf at 6,000 feet. After passing Golf, they had to start descent to 4,500 feet and make a right turn to heading 045. Point Golf was very critical because the airplanes were flying very close to Lanta Island, which was 4,100 feet high. Here is the sharp turn, around Lanta Island, from heading 270 to heading 045 after Point Golf, descending to 4,500 feet. 
Window seat view of a Boeing 747 on IGS approach. The airplanes were on heading 045, descending to 4,500 feet, till establishing on track 088, of Kilo Lima ILS. This is the right turn, from radio 045, to establish track 088, Kilo Lima. After establishing track 088 of Kilo Lima, the pilots should complete the landing setup in full configuration. ILS Kilo Lima seemed like a usual one. For the moment. But, Kilo Lima Glide Slope was not installed next to runway 13 threshold. Kilo Lima Glide Slope was actually installed on a hill. The instrument guidance system was leading the planes to loss of terrain clearance after the middle marker, towards Tsai Hill and Kowloon. The localizer had a repeating voice transmission advising the pilots that, the instrument guidance system, IGS, is not an instrument landing system, ILS. A visual turn to the runway is required. Missed approach is mandatory by the middle marker. Here is the final part of IGS runway 13 procedure. Aligning with the localizer, the aircraft was passing over the construction site of the new Chaklapcock Airport. Notice the cloud base during the IGS procedure. That was most of the time the normal weather in Hong Kong. Many times arriving planes reach middle marker in IMC conditions. Poor weather conditions, and challenging terrain, required strict and precise execution of the IGS approach. This is a simulated cockpit view, from 8 DME established on ILS Kilo Lima. Arriving over middle marker at 1.4 DME from Kilo Lima was the end of this instrument precision approach. At that point pilots had to decide whether to turn right to execute to missed approach. Glide slope, glide slope, glide slope. The missed approach turn was based on 15 degrees bank, 1.5 per second rate of turn, and an average speed of 180 knots whilst turning. to turn right for a visual approach to land. Pilots by middle marker had to have in sight the checkboard. Continuing straight on the ILS from that point would only lead them to the hill terrain. According to the IGS-13 procedure the middle marker is located at 1.4 DME from Kilo Lima. If there is no visual contact with the ICB, the pilots must go around. If they have visual contact with the ICB, they can proceed to the visual step-down approach. At this point two things are happening simultaneously. For the aviation enthusiasts on the ground, the air show begins. But for the passengers, the nightmare begins. Here is an overview of the area of the visual step-down approach. ICB the Hong Kong Curve Runway 13 During the visual step-down approach, the pilots should align the aircraft with runway 13. But they had to do it, with the 47 degrees right turn from track 088 to 135.
two screenshots from simulator showing the offset of ICB and runway 13. That turn should be performed from 660 feet till the touchdown point of the runway 13 in almost one and a half nautical mile. With the Boeing 747 carrying more than 350 souls on board, that was the most spectacular maneuver in aviation. That visual approach was, and will forever be, the most legendary in aviation history, known as Hong Kong Turn, or Checkerboard Turn, or Heart Attack Turn. During approach, on that challenging airport, pilots were facing low cloud base, poor visibility, a steep turn in low altitude over high densely populated area, and finally, when they are about to touch, they had to fight with cross or tailwinds. You will be able to watch these challenging crosswind landings in all the following videos of Kaitak in our channel. Another obstacle to the pilots was the buildings to the right of IGS path, which were blocking the runway view. If the visual step-down approach was performed too low, the runway view was not too clear. A visual aid for the visual step-down approach was the Hong Kong curve. An unusual approach lighting system. Here is a quick review of the Kai Tak Runway 13 landing procedures. NVB Charlie Charlie. NVB 13. The airplanes over Charlie Charlie should have the Insight Stonecutters Island to execute this procedure. We find this procedure with different names through the years. We believe that the checkerboard was used as visual aid for this procedure between 1940 and 1958. Here is a 3D projection of the 90 degrees NDB runway 07 approach using Stonecutters Island. Sierra Charlie NDB at Stonecutters Island was used till the end of Kaitak operation also for missed approach procedures of runway 31 and the known IGS 13 that was described in detail the last procedure was never published officially the minimum to perform this approach was the good visibility good enough to allow visual contact by the pilots with the green island from charlie charlie and also while flying in gulf of tongue wan the planes flew offset from radial 088 Kilo Lima to the north, towards Lung Chang Road. This was offering more space for the final turn, for alignment with runway 13. To be more specific, this path was offering one more mile than IGS 13, making the turn softer. This procedure was initially used by several airlines, but due to a serious incident during the late years of Kai Tak. Only local airlines were allowed to use it. You will notice on many videos, Calf A Pacific and Dragon are landing planes, crossing the checkerboard with almost zero bank, with smoother glide angle, than others till the touchdown. Look how much offset to the north, the 8335s, compared to the Boeing 747 on regular IGS-13 procedure. When video resumes, compare the turns of the two paths, during visual step-down approach, till touchdown.
performing an instrument approach for a landing to an airport such as Kai Tak, was not something normal. There are strict safety margins on IFR procedures design. There are several international standards to comply with. This is the theory. On the other hand, we have a huge demand on real operations. In theory the design of IGS-13 was just on the limits for most of jetliners. However, on actual operations, many times, the airplanes flew beyond their limits in performance envelopes. Visual approaches may be part of instrument procedures, but without strict limitations. The limits of how a pilot will execute a visual approach are subject only to company standard operating procedures. On IGS-13 chart, there is an overlap where the visual step-down approach is replacing IGS approach. Runway 13 was used for landings in almost 99% of the time. Using the opposite runway, 31 would be very easy for landings, but extremely dangerous for takeoffs. A Boeing 747 with 140,000 liters of Jet A-1 for a 13-hour flight was almost impossible to take off from runway 31 and follow an inverse IGS path procedure to climb out of the mountains. This was a brief history of the most legendary airport in aviation history. Kai Tak Airport was closed on July 6, 1998, and its entire operations moved to the new Chaklapkok Airport. You can watch and enjoy rare and impressive videos, full of Kai Tak action, on our YouTube channel, under Kai Tak Playlist. Over cab, a 5,000.